Hello, my name is Mike Ward and I'm the Head of Content at Informer Farmer Intelligence. We're here in Vienna at the Bio Europe Spring Meeting where pharmaceutical industry, biotechs, investors all get together to sort of you know, discuss industry trends, you know, look at what, what is hot and also look to sort of see you know, where there might be opportunities for, for partnering in investment. You know, one of the sort of the hot areas, in fact, of, of recent years has been the sort of the, the advent of immuno-oncology and especially sort of, you know, the development of checkpoint inhibitors. Interestingly, checkpoint inhibitors aren't always effective. I mean, they're certainly not as effective in, in cold tumours. However, if you can turn a cold tumour to a hot tumour, then obviously that changes the, the opportunities that we have with checkpoint inhibitors. I'm George by uh, Rob Mayer, who's the um, CEO of Amphera. Yes. Yeah. And th this is this is your approach, I guess, that you know, just sort of you know, take a cold tumor and, and make it slightly hotter. So, so could you sort of describe exactly what you're doing? Yes, of course. Thank you. Uh, uh, we are uh, uh, actually uh, developing dendritic cell therapies for cancer. Yeah. And our lead product is dendritic cell uh, therapy, uh, autologous dendritic cell therapy, and which we load with an allergenic tumor cell lysis called uh, Ferelis. Uh, we are doing that as we speak in uh, three uh, indications. The first indication is our most important, our lead indication. We are doing a phase two slash three study in pleural mesothelioma. Based on this study, we will register the therapy if successful. The second study is a phase two study in uh, peritoneal mesothelioma, which is the same organ but in, your, in the abdominal cavity, um, uh, with an equally dismal prognosis. And the third uh, indication is a phase two study we will disclose uh, at a later point in time. So this is what we do. And we use the dendritic cells to stimulate the immune system. And why is this necessary? Uh, let's, let's take one step back and then we get to your cold tumor uh, aspect as well. Okay. Um, uh, you have to... Uh, uh, mesothelioma severely suppresses the differentiation and maturation of dendritic cells in a patient. Well, you know probably, as I do, that dendritic cells are the core cells of the... Uh, adaptive immune system. They capture, process, and present the antigens in the lymph nodes to, the activa to activate T cells. But in mesothelioma, this cycle, this cancer immunity cycle, does not work properly. This is why we use the ex vivo route, where we culture, where we harvest monocytes via leukapheresis, a standardized hospital procedure, differentiate them into immature dendritic cells, and then um, uh, load them with our antigens and uh, give them back to the patient in order to induce uh, a broad uh, um, immune response. So this is what we do. This is where indeed we have seen that an immune response is induced and these uh, results, and well, let me take uh, one step back again. We have just announced a press release uh, that we have included the first patients in this phase two, three study. So we are really yeah. excited about that, of course. Yeah. But then to your question about cold and hot tumors, what you see happening today is uh, that uh, checkpoint inhibitors are really successful in many indications, but to date in, in, in mesothelioma they have been not so successful. And that is explainable by the fact that in the tumor microenvironment, because of the dysfunctioning yeah. cancer immunity cycle, there's only a really low number of uh, T cells uh, present. So yeah, you can inhibit what you want, but if there are no activated T cells, then the chances are that the immune response will be uh, low. Hence, the low uh, response rate of checkpoint inhibitors. Yeah. Well, what we this is the theory uh, that so uh, the theory is that after induction of an immune response by the dendritic cell therapy, the response rates of uh, checkpoint inhibitors will yeah. increase. Theory. And we uh, have presented really uh, interesting data on AACR, where in fact we have taken several patients who have been treated with dendritic cell therapy, and subsequently we have treated them with checkpoint inhibitors. And there you see, uh, first of all, safety, only grade one and two uh, adverse events, which is very nice for patients, of course. Uh, and we see a really high uh, disease control rate. 
including partial responses. So uh, we are really excited about those results. Right. Okay, and so this is the sort of the phase two, phase three. Yeah. So <clears throat> how long is it going to be before you're, you have that completed? Uh, this will take probably uh, another two years. Uh, yeah. we, we hope yeah. to uh, submit our dossier uh, end 21, right. something like that. And, and this is something that the company is doing itself or are, 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 have you got partners or are you looking to get partners in to yeah. help you with this? We, uh, we are at the moment fully funded to complete yeah. our clinical uh, programs. So that is good news. Yeah. Uh, and our goal is to go to get to patients as fast as possible. And to that end, we will investigate all possible avenues, being go it alone, which is in our case very feasible, given the fact that this is an orphan disease with uh, uh, mesothelioma care concentrated in select referral centers, or m &A, and and everything in between. So we are, at the moment, scanning the environment uh, as to our options. Right. So, because I guess, I mean, you, the reason why it's autologous is because you have to, you know, take the, um, the, you know, the cells out of out yes. of the body in the first place. So it's always going to be autologous. Uh, this is, I, I guess, this is the safest route to yeah. dendritic cell therapy because it are the patient's own dendritic cells. They know um, what is self and what is not yeah. self. Um, but but this sort of this concept of you know the, the being cold tumors. I mean, there there are quite a few that are also in, 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 yes. in, in that, that basket. Do you have a sort of sense of any of those cold tumors? You would be able to, you know, to flip over to warm them up? <laughs> well, <laughs> interesting. Um, this is certainly an avenue we are investigating because uh, a key aspect of our tumor cell lysis, which is comprised of a number of mesothelioma cell lines, that has a broad spectrum of tumor antigens many of which are shared in other tumors. So right. yes, this is certainly worth investigating. Right. Just as the, the check for the inhibitor data we have, small number of patients, we, this warrants further investigation as well. Yeah, so, so apart from the sort of, obviously progressing sort of the, 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 sort of the clinical uh, operations that, yeah. that, that, that you, you have, what, what are the other sort of, I guess, sort of you know, management challenges that you are now working on? The other challenges? Well, uh, uh, f first of all, of course, manage and finalize uh, the, the, the study programs and, and so on. And of course, we are looking already uh, at the next step uh, because uh, I, I said, it, well, it is easily said, easier said than done. Go it alone is possible. Yeah. Yes, but uh, in our industry, Designing uh, your uh, manufacturing facility, building it, validating it, of course, this takes a lot of time. And we are investigating that uh, route as well. Yeah. So we are building on a lot of different uh, um, uh, things. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I kind of assuming that you don't sort of anticipate your approach that would be a, a monotherapy, but actually it would be a, 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 a combination with, with some of the immuno-oncology uh, products? This is a logical question. Um, we have demonstrated in a phase one, two study in a standalone setting, interesting results. And now we have this data on combination yeah. uh, uh, therapy. So um, uh, both are possible, of course, but in immuno-oncology, combination yeah. are, are uh, potentially the way forward. Yeah. But, um, let, let's say, let the data speak. Yeah, but I, therefore I was just thinking that if, if, yeah. if it was, it, it had to be a combination approach, then you know, you have to do it with partners because you're not, you're not going to start moving into sort of, uh, you know, checkpoint inhibitor uh, development yourselves. No, 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 no. that would be um, a, 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 a okay. little bit uh, too much. And I mean, on the, on the financing front, I, I, have you got enough runway to be able to actually achieve your, your, your ambitions? Yes, we are at, at the moment fully funded yeah. for, uh, for our three clinical right. programs. And of course, uh, uh, after that, we'll see. Right. But, um, but to date, no um, extra money needed. Okay, great. Well, Rob, thanks very much for, okay. for stopping by. Good luck. Thank you very much, Cheers. Mike.